five Christians get together to see if they agree. And one Christian, myself, reacts to that video. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Isaac and this is The Daily Disciple where I help you follow Jesus daily. First off, I just want to give a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. Hey, thank you so much, you guys. Those of you who support me on Patreon, it means so much to me um, and it, it keeps this ministry going, honestly. So if you want to help support um, me on Patreon, if you're not already doing that, you can head on over to patreon.com slash daily underscore disciple. Uh, thanks so much, guys. So as I teased in the intro today, I'm going to be reacting to another video. I'm really enjoying this kind of format. I think you guys, based on the comments I've been getting, are enjoying this kind of style of video too, so I'm definitely going to be doing more of these. Suggest down below videos that you want me to react and respond to, but today I'm going to be responding to another Jubilee video, and this is a video called, Do All Christians Think the Same? Now, initially when I was, you know, about to watch this video, I was like, okay, you know, are they going to talk about pedo-baptism and eschatology <laughs> or Calvinism and Arminianism? But at the same time, I was like, ah, they probably don't go that deep. Turns out I'm right, but we're going to watch the video together and find out. I like Christian music. Three, two, one. Yeah. 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 Good and some of it is lame, but that's the same with like any kind <laughs> yeah, of music. Yeah, any genre of music is so. the same way. I have to be like in a certain setting or a certain mind state to listen to it. I kind of agree that some is good and some is bad, but I kind of feel like 60 to 70 percent of it is not good <laughs> or like exciting. But maybe I'm kind of traumatized because I could only listen to Christian music when I was a kid. Yeah, so I'm now I'm like. <laughs> Yeah. That's relatable. Okay, so in this first part, they're talking about Christian music, and I have a very strong opinion about this. Okay, so I was raised in a homeschooling family, so I was homeschooled um, from, well, we say from birth to, you know, 18 or whatever, and so I was homeschooled. Um, we only really listen to Christian music. I only listened to Christian music pretty much until I was like 16. So when I was kind of showed secular music to me at 16, I'm like, oh, wow, this is so much better than Christian music. So I kind of swayed the other way into totally kind of hating on Christian music to an extent really liking secular music. And I have to say, I kind of still have that same perspective that, you know, to a large degree, a lot of Christian music can sound very trite. Um, and it's just the way they, they, a lot of Christian music deals with tough topics. They'll go from very like sad and, you know, oh man, like life is tough. And then all of a sudden, oh my goodness, life is awesome now and we can all party. It feels very disingenuous and fake and that's just the way I feel and maybe you disagree but there are a lot of Christian artists that I do like and I actually have a list here so then I will tell you them now <laughs> okay so Josh Grell's fantastic for King Country very good need to breathe went to their concert last year so good uh, the Grey Havens underrated small artists but they're so good um, and of course you who can forget about Kanye West I have doubted my beliefs three two one, go. I mean, I'm gay. I'm from like a little town in Texas. It's difficult to not question your faith because you're told that gay people can't be Christians or Christians can only follow these certain uh, rules that are set out. So for me, when I started to grow and to get a relationship with Christianity myself is whenever my faith became stronger. But it was definitely difficult, and I'm still really going through that right now. There were things that I felt like I was born knowing that God loved me and that God was good. And then when I came into the church a little bit later, there were some beliefs, because um, I'm queer, so that people were just like, this is what it is, and you can't be this, and like, this is not da-da-da-da-da-da-da. But the reason I'm in this line is because I never felt that from God I still felt like he loves me. 
Okay, we're really getting into it now. <laughs> okay, I knew this was gonna get interesting. This is why I picked this video to react to. Um, okay, so have I ever doubted my beliefs? Just answering personally for myself. Yes, of course. Um, I think you're, you'd be hard pressed to come across a Christian that hasn't question what they believe um, because that's just the nature of being human we want to know hey, hey, wait what if I'm wrong about this hey what if what if all this isn't true and you have those moments even as a Christian where you're like wait a minute what if what if they're right what if uh, life is meaningless what if we, we just die and it's over all these kind of questions right um, but ultimately we know and I myself have had to come to this realization that even when I have doubts um, that's okay and that I can still be a Christian, even though I have doubts. A Christian isn't somebody who, who has no doubts, but it's it's one that follows Christ despite their doubts, insecurities, and fears. Um, because we've been given that grace by God for him to accept us by, by his grace, right? And so now we can follow him. And it doesn't mean there's not things that keep us back. And there's not things that we question. But ultimately, <laughs> we can put our faith in God and know that even if there's things we don't understand, he has things under control. The interesting thing for these two people here um, is that they've almost questioned their beliefs um, because they disagree with something that's in the Bible that, that the Christianity has taught for, for you know, centuries. Um, the fact that, you know, marriage is between one man and one woman. And, and so this, this, is, this is not congruent with how they see themselves or their identity. So they've, they've doubted. But ultimately, the solution to that is to create an idol, um, one, a God who, who doesn't really care about that, who doesn't care about, you know, how, you know, sexuality or, or he just kind of wants you be you type, type of God that they've created for themselves. You know, do all Christians think the same? Um, no, not all Christians think the same. But we need to understand what does it actually mean to be a Christian? It means to, you know, cast off the flesh and put on Christ. I was dead, dead to dead to sin and alive to Christ. And we can only do that by God's grace. But it seems like these people are creating an idol um, so they don't have to doubt. An idol so then they are can be accepted for who they want to be as opposed to who God created them to be. But we'll get into that a little bit more later. When we mention support, it means to accept. And I don't accept the lifestyles within the community, but do I love them? Do I want the best for them? I absolutely do. Do I think that we should be mean to them in church? Do I think that we should shun them from church? No, and I'm sorry that you guys had that experience because that is awful, that is horrible. No one should go to a church and feel like you need to run away from it. Ooh, this lady's out here speaking some truth. You know, it's amazing to me in the boldness of this lady because this would be a scary situation to be in, at least for me. You think about it, okay, you have, you you know these two people that, you know, one identifies as queer or, and one, um, if not already, has identified, will identify as, as gay later in the video. But you have these two people that, that believe very differently from you and, and have lifestyles that are very opposed to what you believe in and you're forced to, in this video, pick a side, literally. And so I, I appreciate the boldness of this lady, um, but also just the compassion because it can be easy sometimes for some people, depending on your personality, to become very bombastic and very um, just antagonistic, um, maybe even say some insensitive things just because we feel that license just because yeah god says it's wrong you know now we can you know go full force at these people and not be compassionate but i think it's awesome that she can speak the truth in so much love it's an example for us and just saying hey look I, I don't necessarily accept the way you're living your life in terms of uh, that identity that you believe you are born with um but i love you and i want the best for you and i want to continue to point you to what I believe is um, the best for you and, and it is following God and how he has created you. It's interesting though because the thing that has hurt me the most is actually the language with which you're speaking which is m more confusing I think. No one actually shunned me. It was more like this, more like I love you but like God kind of wants to like send you to hell. 
Wow. Okay, that's that <laughs> that takes a little bit to process there. I think this is why it's so important to have these kind of conversations because you develop a lot more clarity. Um, you know, we we might think at the beginning um, with this other lady, the Christian lady who was saying, "Hey, look, I don't know who, you know, if you were shunned from the church or anything like that." And it turns out actually they weren't she wasn't shunned. She wasn't shunned, but actually she she felt like they were saying that, you know, God didn't accept her as she was. And I think this is a, an important distinction here. Um, you know, people will say, um, "Look, we we need to we need to change," or there'll be a lot of confusing terminology. So let me just lay it up here, here for you. So we go to God as we are, right? We go to God as we are. We don't have the power to change in and of ourselves. So Jesus is asking everyone, "Come to me. Come to me." Okay. So whoever you are, whatever you, you're gay, you're straight, whatever, come to me. Okay. But God doesn't want us to stay there, right? God doesn't want us to stay there. Um, he wants to transform us by the power of his Holy Spirit, right? And so he's going to make us dead to the flesh. So that which we had a tendency for sin before we came to Christ, he wants us to put away those things and he's going to help us do that. And he's going to help us follow him and transform. And he's going to help us transform in closer and closer into the image of of himself um but the thing is is when we you know when people have these identities so connected with their flesh so you know i am a i'm gay i'm a transgender i these things that are connected to the flesh and they come to god but they say hey i don't want to let go of this because this is who i am um that's when there's going to become difficulty there that's when there's going to be some some challenging um, challenging things that are going to need to be said, especially in terms of, you know, being in a church and somebody living according to this lifestyle. And you're going to be like, Hey, look, God, God accepts you as you are by his grace, but he doesn't want to leave you there. He doesn't want you living in this sin. And people feel very offended by that because you're saying that their identity, who they believe they are is, is wrong. Right. And that is just the a big crux of the issue is, OK, should we put off the flesh? Right. Or should we continue to walk in the flesh while still saying, yeah, I like Jesus? You know, are we going to walk into this transformation or are we going to hold on to the flesh? These things that we want in our hearts, our old identity, are we going to step into this new creation? If you're going to disagree with it, you also have to understand like the weight of what you are asking a queer person to do. When you look at someone and you feel like they're attractive and you have to disagree with that part of yourself every second of the day, you have to tell yourself that's freaking wrong. That's freaking wrong. And at like every second, like you don't think that I should, I should not marry a woman that I love. I'm not saying you should be alone. I'm saying at the basis of anything, I want you to be who God created you to be. I find it very interesting, the, the words she chooses to use here. You need to understand the weight of what you're asking um, a queer person to do, the weight of it, right? You're, you're asking them to put off this identity that they have, who they believe they are, right? And you're asking them to say, no, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. Um, it, it brings me back to the scriptures actually and what Jesus actually calls all of us to do and, and is to put off the old self and follow him, is to pick up our cross and follow him. The weight of that is ginormous because we're leaving behind everything that we knew. As Christians, that's what it means to be a Christian. It means to leave what you knew and follow Christ into something new into his newness of life, right? And so the weight of that is enormous. It is enormous. And if we're just on our own doing, you know, if we're just up to us to, to leave that on our own, then we would be, that would be very, very heavy. Um, but thankfully, God is sovereign over all of his creation. And he gives us the grace to follow him and into that weighty, weighty um, calling and that mission. There's so much here. I'm gonna do a part two. So come back uh, later this week, I think actually. And we're gonna do a part two to this video. There's so much more interesting stuff. So stay tuned for that. Thanks again for watching this video. Thanks again to my patrons on Patreon because you guys are amazing. Thank you for supporting me. And uh, if you like this video, give it a like down below. Subscribe because you will wanna see that part two and uh, putting out new videos like this all the time. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Love you guys. See you later.